Welcome to Algebra. In this playlist, we're going to go through this college algebra textbook shown here by Julie Miller and Donna Gherkin. We're going to go through this entire textbook from start to finish. So we're going to flip through and take a look at every section of the textbook. We're going to work a lot of example problems on each topic. And also there's going to be separate dedicated videos focusing on specific topics. And so this playlist is designed to where if you watch and pay attention closely in all of the textbook and instructional videos, and for the example problem videos, you practice each example problem on your own, then watch the solution, then try the next example problem on your own. So truly practice all of the example problems that are given, every example problem in each video. Then by the end of the series, you'll be an expert at the subject of algebra. Okay, so we're going to start with chapter R. This is pre-algebra. So we're going to start with pre-algebra. What is pre-algebra? Let's try and get some perspective on exactly where we are right now. So once you graduate high school, now I know some students do like an introduction to calculus or take a basic calculus course in, in high school. Let's, let's say there's no calculus in high school. So forget about calculus, no calculus. When you graduate from high school, you've had a healthy exposure to what math subjects? You've had a healthy exposure to algebra one and algebra two. So all of algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and probability and statistics. And so before middle school or high school, what do you learn in math in preparation for those primary subjects of algebra, geometry, trigonometry, statistics? You learn how to count. You learn basic addition and subtraction, basic multiplication and division. Then it gets a little more complex. You start doing all of those steps jumbled into, into one expression. So combined addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. You learn about decimal points, how to, how to add, multiply all that with decimal points. You learn about fractions, how to multiply, add, subtract fractions, long division. As the complexity increases, you learn about exponents. So like three squared is three times three, or like something like a to the third power is a times a times a. You learn about square roots or cube roots or just radicals, right? The inverse of exponents. You learn how to multiply exponent terms, how to multiply radical terms, divide radical terms. You learn about real numbers, the different subsets of real numbers, integers, natural numbers, rational numbers, prime numbers. All of this prepares you for taking algebra, algebra and statistics. Geometry, I guess, the things you learn in grade school in preparation for geometry would be stuff related to like shapes, angles, things like that. Trigonometry is probably more related to geometry as well because it's all about the right triangle. Okay, so algebra. When you think about the subject of algebra, what you're thinking about is variables, equations, so solving for variables and equations, and functions and relations. So graphs, graphing functions, graphing expressions, you know, a function as an operator, how the function can be applied to model something, model something in life. That's algebra. So before algebra, you're not really being exposed to any of that. You are introduced to variables. So, so before algebra, you get used to working with variable terms. So like you'll have x cubed times x to the fifth, and you multiply those two. Adding variable terms, so combining like terms. So you get used to working with variables, but you, but you don't see those variables in an equation. You don't, you don't look at variable expressions as functions, plot functions. All of that we do in algebra. And so the purpose of pre-algebra is that everything before algebra, everything before we start talking about equations and functions, so everything we know related to expressions, simplifying expressions, simplifying fractions, radicals, polynomials, factoring, we're reviewing all of that. So the goal is when you're done with pre-algebra, when we're done with chapter R, everything you learned from kindergarten, first grade, to the start of algebra is cemented in your head. Now in pre-algebra, we don't go over every single topic that was done in first grade, second grade, like long division or, or adding decimals. A lot of those very basic skills are built into the example problems that we solve in all of these sections. 
So you'll need to be able to go off to the side and do a multiplication to get a final answer or add a decimal, divide two decimals to get a final answer, right? So if we're in section R.2 or R.1 and we're working an example on some topic, well, part of the solution to solve that problem will require, you might have to do long division or you can use a calculator. But again, once we complete chapter R pre-algebra, all of the math you learned from kindergarten to, I guess, seventh, eighth or ninth grade when you start algebra is cemented in your head. So you're ready for algebra. Now, not including stuff in grade school, like related to shapes. So stuff that you might learn before you take the official geometry class. But most of the math you learned from kindergarten to the start of algebra, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, the start of algebra will be fully cemented by the time we're done with pre-algebra, chapter R. All right, so after pre-algebra, we go to chapter one, equations and inequalities. And so what this chapter is, is that after pre-algebra, we're very familiar with all kinds of expressions, you know, adding basic variables, adding, multiplying exponents with variables, rational expressions. So you have a fraction and variables in the numerator and denominator. We know how to work with those. There's all kinds of different expressions that we're very familiar with. So what we do in chapter one is we put those expressions into equations and learn how to solve all kinds of different equations, right? Linear equations, rational equations, quadratic equations, polynomial equations, not just equations, but inequalities. So we take all of those expressions that we know and, and, and we say that that expression is equal to something or it's greater than or equal to something. And we learn how to solve equations and inequalities. Then in chapter two, we're introduced to functions and relations, right? You can take an expression like a polynomial expression. We know what a polynomial expression is, but you can treat it as a function to where you can use it to model something in real life or as part of something in a code, or you can graph it and look for properties of the graph, distinctive features of that function. We'll see the difference between a function and a relation so like if you graph a circle, you can put an algebraic expression to represent a circle, but that's not a function and we'll see why. Okay, so but chapter two, we're just introduced to what a function is and what a relation is. In chapter three, we talk specifically about polynomial and rational functions. So again, using those functions to model things in real life. What does the graph of a polynomial look like? What does the graph of a, of a rational function look like? What are the distinctive features? Okay, and then chapter four, before algebra, we've had very little, if any, exposure to an exponential or a logarithm, right? So we know what exponents are. We know we, we have a lot of practice with like x cubed. And then the inverse of that, so the cube root of x, we know exponent terms and radicals, but we know very little, if any, about like 2 to the x or 3 to the x. And the inverse of this, so log base 2, and, and, you, and you write out the logarithm. Okay, what do the graphs of these functions look like? What about equations with these functions? How do you solve these kinds of equations, logarithmic and exponential equations? How do you model real life phenomena with these functions? Okay, chapter five, systems of equations and inequalities. So what if you have an equation with more than one variable? You've got multiple equations and multiple unknown variables. So a system of equations or inequalities, how do you solve that? All right, chapter six, matrices and determinants and applications. So this is just like a, a brief introduction to linear algebra. So this falls under the category of linear algebra. Okay, analytic geometry. We learned about the algebraic expressions for the ellipse, the hyperbola, and the parabola. And there could be a lot of real life phenomena that has a hyperbolic distribution, a parabolic distribution, or something could be elliptical. So if you've got a phenomena that is has a hyperbolic distribution, it's valuable to understand exactly how hyperbolic functions or, or, or expressions, the, the different attributes of them. All right. And then the last chapter is sequences, series, induction, and probability. I put probability under the category of statistics. So um, this is the only section we're not going to go over is the probability section. We're going to do that in the statistics playlist, but sequences and series, and induction, induction is part of sequences and series. This is kind of, it's almost like its own independent topic. It's, it's a little different from all the other algebra stuff we do in the previous chapters, but this is still valuable because there's a lot of 
things in life that you need to look at like a sequence or a series. And so these are skills that we need to learn. In calculus, we're going to go a lot deeper into series. And so this chapter is important for us to build our foundation on this topic. Okay, so that's what we're going to learn in this algebra playlist. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get started.